Welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, this is Thursday, so we are, um, this is our Community CPA Guest Webinar Day. Um, so if you've joined us before, Community CPA, we have our uh, webinars every day at 3 p.m. And on Thursdays, we always bring in a guest to talk about different business topics. Um, so this topic today is uh, turning a hobby into a business and finding support for your passion, particularly in this talk about the arts. So we've invited Shaban Fain from Mainframe Studios, which is a nonprofit organization um, that serves uh, artists in the Des Moines metro area. So welcome, Shaban. Thank you for being here today. Well, it's really nice to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Could you tell us a bit about yourself? I, I mean, we have your bio up here. Um, you've had a lot of experience in the arts field. Um, what brought you to creating Mainframe Studios? Yeah, it's a great, uh, interesting story. You know, I, um, I moved back, I guess in 2000. Nine, I think it was about the same time that Justin Mandelbaum, the founder of Mainframe Studios, moved back from the East Coast, and I moved back from Los Angeles area, and um, he had this crazy idea for this really big um, nonprofit art studio building that he was pitching around town, and we got to know each other, and he got to know my background, which is pretty um, varied. Uh, and kind of unusual, but pretty, uh, I, I love all the experiences I've had with the arts and it really almost uh, led me to this position here, you know, not really anticipating an art career in Des Moines. Um, it was kind of quiet when I came back for the most part, um, needed, to have a little bit of faith that something would work out in the arts again. Um, but it, and it did, you know, when mainframe, when they bought the building at 900 Kia way where we are now, Justin was like, I really need you to run it. So that's what happened. And my background working with artists in their studio um, and directing an art gallery in Los Angeles, and sitting on the boards of nonprofits and overseeing funding for non arts nonprofits, it all kind of like worked its way. I use all of those all here at Mainframe. And it's been, Wonderful. so I've been here, I was just saying, I've been here since 2014, and we invited our first artisan in, in 2017. So it was a long time coming. Wonderful. So what was the, the vision of it um, as he was and you were thinking of developing this project? What did you want it to be? Yeah, so there were there are a lot of examples of artists getting priced out of urban centers. Um, it was a headline that's really persistent. Um, some of the most recent ones were coming out of Austin you know, they were losing the mojo that they were so known for because, you know, those real estate market goes up, those um, studio buildings get sold. Um, and then next thing you know, St. Kilda moves in, which has happened here to one of our art studio buildings. And nothing wrong with that. I love St. Kilda, but it means that there needs to be a new formula for art studio buildings so artists can be, um, part of our community fabric for generations to come. And he had experience back in Lowell, Massachusetts, um, firsthand knowing that why this problem keeps happening. He wanted to stop that in Des Moines. So the idea was to create a nonprofit that is always here for generations to come, kind of like, you know, we have the Des Moines Performing Arts, we have the Arts Center, we have the opera, why not build infrastructure for individual artists that are here day in and day out, not seasonally, not if weather permits. They're part of our community every day, adding to the community, uh, community's quality of life. Um, so that was the nonprofit aspect. The other new aspect of this model that we're creating is that it's financially self-sustaining once complete. 
So we're not quite complete yet. So we're not there, um, but we are covering our expenses now. The idea is that we have one more floor to go and with one more floor, we'll be able to build our own endowment, kind of eliminating the, re the, the need for fundraising. Um, so that's unusual for a nonprofit. We really, our right. future really wanted to not um, hinder other organizations and artists getting funded. So we have really low rent. Artists can rent space here for usually a dollar or less per square foot per month. And that includes utilities, it includes 24 seven access, it includes general liability insurance. So we don't have to run after everybody's certificate of insurance um, and also Wi-Fi. So it's, um, it's an awesome combination. It's totally working. Uh, fundraising is hard, but the end is near. Um, we just had the Lorisons um, put up a, a challenge match. So they're gonna give up to a million dollars as long as we can get matches from the community and that will complete our project, which is fantastic. Um, but we have 131 studios already. Wow. I didn't and it's full. Cool. We're at wow. capacity and we have a waiting list. It's fantastic. I love being that around all these creatives. <laughs> That's wonderful. So what are, um, besides space and place, um, are there other challenges uh, artists face as they're starting up that uh, Mainframe is seeking to, to help with? Yeah, you know, the whole idea is that that affordability uh, really takes that risk down for starting a business or starting a practice, you know, however you want to see. There's so many ways to be a creative professional. And I really want Mainframe to allow that flexibility. There's no one way. Find your way here. Um, you know, we have artists um, that do a recording studio here. We have people that do ceramics. We have people that are game developers here. Lots of variety. There's some emerging artists, obviously the affordability is really helpful for them, but I always like to add that it's really important for established artists because we really want them to have the flexibility to continue to innovate and experiment yeah. and create new bodies of work or new products or, you know, however, whatever that, that new thing might be. Um, so the affordability is huge. It's really helped a lot of artists out. Another thing is being connected to the community. So another thing Mainframe does is like a lot of these artists had no studios or they were working out of their home um, or the living room. Now they're all under one roof. They have a community of their own. They have resources in their, in their fellow artists. They have connection to the community that comes in and connects with their work. We have open studio events every first Friday of the month that's free and open to the public. Um, a lot of artists um, create new relationships with clients during that time. They're able to really pitch or experiment with new ideas with the, the market. Um, and another thing is that that visibility and the resources that Mainframe has. So we really help spread the word. Um, we help connect them with resources that maybe they're needing just from our network. Um, so a lot of things that can help artists flourish here in a lot of different ways. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's creating that ecosystem, right? Yes. Um, so when artists approach you, do they usually have a very established business? Um, going on or are they kind of new to it um, and is you you mentioned a waiting list so is it like first come first serve basis right you know it's not it's usually kind of a match matching game um, we really want people a big part is just matching the artist with the size of studio that's available um, another one is we really like to have as many mediums as possible so that cross collaboration can happen. Um, and also we want the mix of 
ages and backgrounds and races, of course, and um, just that skill level. You know, we want really established artists here so they can be mentors to the people just starting out. So, you know, it it's all kinds. Some people are really established, like Chris Vance is here. You know, he's had a really great uh, fine art career for a long time and he needed space to create that's affordable. And we were able to provide that for him. Um, we also have uh, Gretchen Bowling is a great example of an entrepreneur that really flourished here. She is a fashion designer. So being here really allowed her a professional place to meet clients. Um, she got connected with DMAC and now teaches classes there that she wasn't anticipating. Oh, nice. She teaches sewing lessons now. Um, and she has, um, does a lot of tailoring and she has her own line of clothing too. That's very like sustainability minded. Um, so yeah, I love seeing how artists have an idea and then come in to mainframe and able to really, uh, respond to the market and test out ideas. So a lot of people have different ways of getting income. Just like um, Gretchen, for instance, teaching at DMAC, teaching out of her studio. She has, she does custom um, work that she has clients just met through Instagram. They don't even live in Des Moines, but she has these clients that she creates uh, wardrobes for, uh, obviously tailoring. And then um, she also has products on hand to sell. So you just think of those, all those different income sources for her that she's able to do to ensure that she's able to not just survive, but really thrive. That's great. Yeah. So during the pandemic, um, has that really impacted artists? Um, and because mm -hmm. I imagine there weren't as much traffic within it. How did you have to pivot during that time? Yeah, you know, we pivoted quite a bit. I think every single person, whether you're a, an organization or an artist um, or an entrepreneur of any kind, um, you had to flex some muscles that were probably um, atrophied in some way or another. Um, you know, some couldn't make it. it. We had few, which is great. It wasn't very many. We do have turnover here, and that's by design. We really want people to experiment whether this is their thing or not, if it's a good fit or not, you know, all that stuff. Um, I found that people that had a good online presence before the pandemic um, was really able to capitalize on that during the pandemic. I found that it was hard learning curve for people to do it during the pandemic, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I do think that it was really eye-opening for some artists that they do need to diversify their sources of income um, and not just rely on First Fridays, which some do. It's like, hey, you, you're on Instagram. How do you actually buy it? You know, like, what are your hours? Because we don't we don't really set anybody's hours because we don't want to tell people how to do their business. They're, they're their own CEOs here. Um, obviously our doors are open. Most business days um, we're, we're closed on Sunday for the most part, but people can come see, but they don't know whether they're artists or in or not. So really upping that communication with their audience and providing options for making those connections that were done previously in person. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. So you, you told me a bit about the first Fridays. Can you tell us a bit more about those events and other events that are happening in, at Mainframe? I see it popping up on social media. So Yeah, we have so much going on here. You know, our Mainframe um, really prides itself on its programming, which is focused on first Fridays. So every first Friday of the month from four to eight, um, it's open, free to the public, really family friendly. We have always have some musical guest. We have a theme. We have food and drink to purchase. Um, you can really make a night of it because we have three floors of 
art happenings in so many different ways. Um, so I really encourage people to check it out. It's really fun. I love the themes. It was a genius idea from some of our artists when we first started. Um, so like last theme was above and beyond. So one of our artists here is a photographer and did all the photography for, photography for Above and Beyond's new book um, that documented um, the journeys of cancer survivors. So he had his artwork on display. Uh, Drake Press had the books for sale. Um, and then up on fourth floor, we had Matthew Coronas do an exhibition of his new work, which were really exciting, colorful works of art. Um, so yeah, that every time you come down, even if you wanna come down every month, you're gonna experience something new. We have an art supply store here. So beyond our programming, we really love to empower our artists to do their own programming. So for instance, um, Jess Quinn here does, she does do-it-yourself kits. Talk about during the pandemic, she created that. Yeah. Hit. They're amazing. And then made videos to go along with them so people could follow along at home. And Linda Lewis did that as well. Um, so we have these innovators that really wanted to test it out. and. The art supply store, you know, people were able to come pick them up from there as well. Um, and then we have um, other things here, like the glass blower. You can stop in and have find demonstrations um, and sign up for workshops there. So we like to have plant the seed for First Friday, and then get people connected with our artists to come back for different experiences, whether it's a workshop, whether it's like, hey, let's have an event in our big, our big, we call it the big room, it's our event space. Um, come have a dance instruction from um, Creative Love um, in their dance studio. So lots of options for people to come on first fr Friday, but also other, other opportunities. Wonderful. So um, your the long term vision for mainframe, right? You talked about it being an endowed organization, having that support. Um, any other things of how you would like to see mainframe grow and develop in the future? Yeah, you know, we've been so focused on our original strategic plan that um, that has been pretty consistent. Um, and now it's within reach, which is exciting. We have, I know it's a lot of money, a million dollars, but compared to what we've done, it seems very attainable, <laughs> finally. Um, so to build out that other floor, you know, we could fill it tomorrow if we built it out, which is exciting. I think it's really should be encouraging to people to know that people have a lot of hope for the creative market in Des Moines. Um, we are now painting the outside of our building that is a long-term goal. Um, come down Kia Way and now you can't miss us. Um, we're gonna be literally on the map now. So my long-term goal with that is to really get us um, known beyond um, Iowa, which should be nice. Cause I do think, you know, I've had a lot of experience in the arts and in representing individual artists. And I don't care whether you're in LA, Santa Fe, New York City, you have to have a market beyond your state. I mean, that should be a goal of anybody. Um, I think there's a lot, not that it can't happen locally, but I think, I mean, my goal is to provide that opportunity anyway, to connect with a greater art market, um, whether it's crafting, whether it's fashion, whether it's gaming, um, whether it's ceramics, you name it. Um, you know, a lot of people do art fairs um, across the country and that's a way to build that clientele. But I want Mainframe to be able to be known so we can help represent those artists beyond um, Iowa and let them know that this is a city full of creatives that have amazing talent. We have so much talent in Des Moines. It's so much, it's so nice to be able to put them under one roof and really show them off. So I think young yeah. people, I hope, are encouraged to create, you know, have a career in the arts where 
sometimes traditionally parents are really afraid of their kids going into the arts. I'm hoping mainframe yeah. gives them a little bit more confidence in that trajectory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, anything else you'd like to share in terms of um, how people can participate um, at either kind of in the supporting role of the organization overall or for individual uh, artists um, or just supporting the event? Yeah, you know, come experience it. If you haven't been down here before, I highly recommend it. Um, nights and weekends, there's plenty of parking around us. Um, I also just encourage you to connect, find artists that you really connect with. And I think that that can develop those relationships that make our community stronger. You know, we all have um, our talents and strong suits and together we can all like help each other succeed. I'm all, I'm a, a big uh, fan of raising all boats. You know, it's not just about mainframe, it's about the community of artists. Whether you're a mainframe artist or not, you have a place here. And we really want you to know that we're, we're a advocate no matter what. Perfect. So I have your contact up, um, okay. up here, info at mainframestudios.org, um, and as well as some of your social contacts. So if people want, they can reach out. Uh, I, I guess I didn't have your, it's mainframestudios.org is your website. Um, so, so yes, feel free to visit them either on the first Friday um, or to visit the individual studios. Um, if you have any other questions, um, feel free to send them over, info at mainframestudios.org. Um, you can also send me any um, questions or inquiries that you'd like me to pass along, and I'm happy to do that, uh, Catherine at communitycpa.com. Awesome. Anyway, thank you so much again for coming on. I love what Mainframe Studios is doing, and um, Really excited not to catch the next first Friday. Yeah, thanks for being there with community too. I, I really uh, admire your vision and these webinars. These are really helpful. I've heard so many great things about them from artists. So thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, we'll be in touch. All right. Take thanks care, everyone. For joining.